What exactly are we doing in this episode? Uh, we are going to fully refresh this engine. Just seals, a coat of paint, and a couple nice parts. That's right. Now in with this engine, what exactly are we doing? Now we've talked about it before, but what do we have behind us? One six, right? I mean, come on, they're the power, best engines. Power house. We can't handle by power. far, by far. We can't handle the power of one six. But yeah. what this is is a thirty-six thousand mile VVT. Uh, has a square top manifold on it already. Nothing fancy. It's gonna stay as is. No uh, ITVs, sadly. No turbo. No nothing. Uh, and then we're just gonna refresh it, make it reliable, and throw it back in the car. So step one is the easy part. Uh, some of the stuff's already taken apart, just that's how we got it. Uh, but we're gonna start blowing the pieces off that we don't need or that we need to get access to to rebuild it. So intake manifold off, timing covers, we'll pop the belt off and we'll get it down to a bare looking engine. And then we'll start to reassemble it on the way back up. So that's probably the fastest we've ever torn an engine apart, but it is down to essentially the point where we're now going to start putting it back together. We still have to pop out all the seals, like your front main, cam seals. We'll do the rear main once we take it off the stand at a later point, but it will all get done. This is probably the cleanest engine I've ever taken apart. It has, I mean, it's got like crud on it, but the fact that the oil pump is not black with oil and like there's some schmutz here, but everything slid off the crank boss, slid, or like the cog for the timing gear slid right off. Like I didn't have to put any force on it. Uh, everything's come apart super nice. So we had a little bit of scope creep. Uh, as you can see, the block is fully painted now. We cleaned the oil pan mainly to start with so we could see oil leaks in the future. And then I was like, oh, we might as well spray it. And then the block looked bad, so we painted the block. And then I looked at the combo and I'm like, why don't we just paint the whole thing? We have a nice painted valve cover. So we kind of went out of control. Uh, but the next thing we're gonna do is start actually putting it back together like we said last time. So I'm gonna start with the water pump, bolt that up, crank seal, and then we'll put all that stuff on for the timing belt. I'm waiting on the cam gears to dry because I also painted those. Uh, and because you guys wanted the exposed cam gear cover, we had to paint those so they look nice. So those are hopefully going to dry by the time I'm done today. But we are going to work our way up to the top and uh, we'll take you with us.
So Cam and Dylan both have to leave prior commitments. It's kind of late, late. It's like four-ish on a Sunday, so everybody's trying to pack up and go home. Uh, I'm gonna try and knock out a couple more things. I do have a bird that is being a companion to me right now. He seems stuck even though the garage door is wide open. Won't get any glam shots of anybody working because I'm doing this solo, so I'm just gonna give you an update on where I am. Uh, cam gears are on. As you can see, we did a like a machined face on here, on both gears. Uh, this plate is on. Yes, there's nothing in here yet. Uh, I'm just gonna go get a freeze plug and I can hammer that in even once the timing belt is done. So next step, I totally forgot, but I have to measure valve lash to make sure we don't have to swap out any of these. I wouldn't be timing it if I had to pop out a valve shim. So I'm just gonna verify everything's good. It's a low mile motor, so it should be okay, which would be sick. That bird's really, really living it up there. Uh, so I'm gonna measure that quick. And then if that is good, I will time the motor and I'll throw the valve cover on it and you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, we painted the valve cover off camera. Where is it? So we did 10 a.m. breathers like always. There's ports here and here. Um, I do need to put the baffling in place. So hopefully I have time to do that today. Just did this, so this is very fresh. If you are curious on how to do the wrinkle black stuff, this is not powder coat. We do have a video on this. Uh, how to wrinkle black your valve cover. It's super easy. Uh, and Greg has, Greg Peters, me out of dad, the Car Passion channel, has a really good video on how to fill the lettering in. Did this as well. Got all the stuff to rebuild that. My goal for the end of today is to get all the timing done and put the valve cover on. Uh, and then when I pick you guys up later, probably a couple days for me here, we're going to do some fancy things like a coolant reroute from Moss and some AWR engine mounts. But today my goal is to wrap up the timing and have a nice sealed engine that can sit here. Valve lash is perfect. Uh, it is 12 to 13 thousandths on the exhaust side and eight to nine thousandths on the intake side all the way through. So we're gonna be able to time this motor today and throw the valve cover on and we have everything to do that. So I'm gonna have a nice beautiful package by the end of this video. A quick tip for anyone doing anything like this. Uh, I get a lot of questions if from people in my DMs, which is fine. If your engines look timed and you know they send me a picture of the cog and you know, it's the 19 teeth between here and these are all lined up like they should be. Uh, another good check is these cam lobes should always be 180 degrees opposing. So if you were to like draw a line across cam lobe tip, cam lobe tip would be a straight line with the top of the head. So just double check that. And if like one is pointing up or something, that's your problem. One eternity later. So it's all timed up. Uh, that is in the notch, pretty dead center there. Your I is right in line with this guy. Your E is the line in line with this. This doesn't actually have an E mark on it, but whatever. Uh, and then a good check is 19 teeth between the 12 o'clock position of this gear and the 12 o'clock position of this gear. So one, two, three, four, all the way through to 19. That bird is obnoxious. Valve lobes, or sorry, cam lobes are still 180 degrees opposing. So everything looks good to me. It feels like it has compression when you crank it around. So I'm running real short on time, so this will be quick. This is as close as I'm gonna get, as far as I'm gonna get tonight. It is all assembled, everything is torqued to spec up top. We've got R8 coils on top from, uh, we're gonna run the flow force setup. And uh, sorry about the background noise, my neighbors are apparently doing stuff. But it is all timed, it is all together, it looks sick. And when I pick you guys back up in a couple of days, we will be installing a Cobalt reroute kit from Moss, some AWR 95 drometer engine mounts. We'll have the square top all prettied up and that'll bolt right on. And then we have a header that's going to go on this side so you'll see the whole package and it is going to look sick. As promised, we're back. Uh, episode's still not over yet. so. We're going to be installing the coolant reroute today. Uh, we've got a kit from Moss. And if you want to see the full install, we've got a video that I'll link right up here uh, that we did. So super simple setup. We're doing this to make the track car run as cool as possible. Uh, if you've been around Miatas at all, you know rear roots are a big thing. Uh, Dylan's actually running one in his car. Cam is running one in his car. NA or turbo, I 100% think it's one of the most effective and efficient mods you can do. 
uh, helps the car stay cool. You can beat on it without worrying and you won't blow up cylinder four. So this is gonna be more of a time-lapse setup. If you wanna watch the full install, again, that link's in the top left corner, top right corner. Yeah, I'm gonna set you up on a tripod and you can watch it all go together. So here's the fully installed setup. You saw it on the time lapse, and if you didn't get the whole gist of it, that video will guide you the right way. So here's the kit fully installed, close up, sandwich plate. We are blocking off the heater core hose because we're not gonna run a heater core because race car. Uh, water neck with a thermostat in it, 180 degrees instead of the factory 190. And then this is their reroute hose, which if you guys have ever done a reroute, you know that the preformed setup is very nice as opposed to the hoses that just kind of come straight out. So we'll touch base on this again when it's installed in the car, but it's a super nice piece. Uh, I did make my own block off plate because we're not going to run that water neck. And I've also, uh, during this episode, since we're not running a heater core, I welded this shut and I ground off the port that goes from the coolant neck up front here because we're not going to run that either. So the only lines containing coolant that this is going to have is the out from the radiator and the in from the radiator. So it helps minimize leaks on our point for something we're gonna beat on. We don't need heat in the car. Yes, I do understand that sometimes it is beneficial to have a heater core so you can defrost your windshield. Uh, I don't like the cold, so I probably won't be doing track days when it's frosty out. Up next, uh, we're gonna install some motor mounts from AWR. These are, uh, I'll show them in a second here. They are 95 durometer engine mounts and they lower the engine in the car by 0.3 inches, which gives us a lower center of gravity uh, and if anything should help with handling and all that stuff. So big shout out to AWR for sponsoring those parts. Uh, really excited to have them on board and also really excited to have Moss on board for things like the coolant reroute. It's cool to see companies supporting a smaller channel like ours. Uh, we were very hesitant at first to reach out to anybody, but the response has been great. Uh, we've got some really cool people to bring on board that we're gonna introduce you guys to as we go along here. As promised, here are the AWR engine mounts. There will be a link to these below. These are the 95 durometer, like as stiff as it gets before you go solid mount. It is, we will have a, we'll have a full video on these uh, this coming Wednesday and the highlights and why we're gonna run these on this setup and why you should consider a set for your own car. Uh, but just a quick overview, look at those welds. Those are done by hand by AWR. They are consistent and honestly, if you told me they were done by a machine, I would believe you. But uh, real quick, I'm gonna throw these on and I'm gonna show you why they have this little weird ear. Actually, I'll do that right now. So these are uh, VVT specific engine mounts. Any NB mount will work. Uh, I've used NA8 mounts on an NB engine, but the reason that they have this little toggle here, so the three bolts as normal go up here. And then the fourth bolt actually goes into the oil pan down there. Uh, I'm not sure what it provides. I'm assuming some sort of more uh, rigidity. It is an NB2 specific setup. Uh, every NB2 engine mount has that. Yeah, I'm gonna show you what these look like on the car. We're just gonna cut to it in this. If you wanna see the actual install, that'll come this Wednesday. Uh, see you in a second. So here is the setup. Uh, what's nice about these is when you install them in the car, I'm 99% sure you just take this bolt out here, the cross bolt, remove this, and it's very easy to lower the engine in and install these once they're already in the car. So we'll do that uh, in the next Saturday episode. Hopefully this will be going in the car. Uh, little tip, we're a little ahead. Uh, this is being shot in between episodes, but both engine mounts are on. Here's the passenger side. Same situation, just backwards, and it's bolted to the pan. Everything is tight. So. This engine is essentially uh, ready to go in from an outside perspective. We're gonna, in the next episode, you'll see us work on that a little bit more. Um, sneak preview, there's some stuff missing from Dylan's car. And some of that stuff is going on the back of this. Uh, and we should have an entire unit that is ready to drop into the track car. So stay tuned. Uh, I know I said Wednesday, but actually Thursday, so Thanksgiving morning will be the AWR engine mount overview install. 
head on over, check out their site. If you use the code NAPMOTO, it gets you 10% off of their site. Uh, and if you use the code NAPMOTO during Black Friday, you get 10% off and a free shirt. So check them out. Also head on over and check out Mas Miata for the Cobalt reroute. And they've got a lot of other great products on their website. And they've got sales going on, uh, on and off. So check them out. I know right now that reroute is actually on sale for less than 200 bucks, which is, I believe, the best deal on the market. And it is a very nice kit. So head on over, check that out. You don't want to miss that. So uh, that's going to be a wrap for this episode. Tune in Thursday for the engine mounts and tune in Saturday for hopefully the engine install. So big progress coming on the track car. If you like what you see, you know the drill, like, comment, subscribe, and let us know in the comments what parts you're buying on Black Friday. Thank you.